So, this is a presentation regarding the chapter 4 of the book, A Photographic Atlas of Marine Biology. So, in this chapter, we will tackle all about Ostictees or bony fishes. Ostictees is a diverse class of fish that make up most of the fish population and the largest class of vertebrates in existence, with over 45 orders, 435 families, and 28,000 species. Although it is used to be called the class Ostictees in a taxon, it is now used to describe fishes that have skeletons made out of bony tissues. The term came from the combination of the words osti, meaning bones, and from the word ictictis, meaning fish. This collection of fishes also has a bony upper column covering the opening of their gills and lungs or swim bladders to enable them to breathe underwater. Bony fishes inhabit almost every body of water. They are found in tropical, temperate, and polar seas as well as virtually all freshwater environments. The bony fish make up to 58% of all the fishes living in the ocean environment and up to 42% in the freshwater. Mouth, shape, size, and position are good indication of bony fish feeding habits. Most bony fish have mouth at the front end of the head. Some bottom feeding species have mouth on the underside of the snout angled toward the bottom. Others, surface feeding species have mouth that angle upwards. In terms of feeding mechanism, most bony fishes are carnivorous, meaning they hunt other fishes or other animals to feed on. But there are also some herbivores which are considered rare, suspension feeders, scavengers which feed on scraps left by other predators, detritivores, meaning they feed on dead animals, and parasites means they get their food by the means of parasitism. Most species of bony fishes are covered with and protected by a layer of plates called scales. There are four different kinds of bony fish scales, the cosmoid, ganoid, cycloid, and tenoid. As I have mentioned before, the skeleton of bony fishes is made of bone and cartilage. The vertebral column, cranium, jaw, ribs, and intramuscular bones make up a bony fish's skeleton. The skeleton of a bony fish gives structure, provides protection, assists in leverage, and along with the spleen and the kidney is the site of red blood cell production. In terms of the nervous system, and their sensory function, the nervous system of fishes is poorly developed compared to that of other vertebrates. But, bony fish's brain is divided into three sections, the forebrain, the midbrain, and the hindbrain. So the forebrain is responsible for the bony fish's ability to smell. Bony fishes that have an especially good sense of smell, such as eels, have an enlarged forebrain. The midbrain processes the vision learning and motor responses so the digestive system of a bony fish starts from the mouth then the food goes down to the esophagus the esophagus in a bony fish is short and expandable so that large objects can be swallowed the esophagus walls are layered with muscle most species of bone fishes have a stomach usually the stomach is bent muscular tube in a u or a v shape Gastric glands release substance that break down the food to prepare it for digestion. At the end of the stomach, many bony fishes have a blind sac called the philoric cica. The philoric cica are an adaptation for increasing the gut area where they digest the food. The pancreas secretes enzymes into the intestine for digestion. Most food absorption takes place in the intestine. The length of the intestine in bony fishes varies greatly. Plant-eating bony fishes generally have long coiled intestines, while carnivorous bony fishes have shorter intestines. The digestive system terminates or ends at the anus. A bony fish's heart has two chambers, an atrium and a ventricle. The venous side of the heart is preceded by an enlarged chamber called the sinus venosus. 
The arterial side of the heart is followed by a thickened muscular cavity called the bulbus asteriosus. The sinus pedosus receives a oxygen-depleted blood from the body. A valve at the end of the sinus venosus opens into the atrium. The atrium has a thick muscular walls. The atrium receives oxygen-depleted blood and pops in into the ventricle. The ventricle is the largest and most muscular chamber of the heart. When filled with blood, it constricts forcing the blood through the bulbus asteriosus. Blood flows to the bulbus asteriosus into the ventral aorta. A valve or a series of valves in the bulbus asteriosus controls the blood flow into the ventral aorta. The ventral aorta, from there, blood flows to the gill filaments where it is oxygenated. Oxygenated blood flows from the gill filaments to the organs of the head and the body. A complex system of arteries, veins, and capillary circulates blood throughout the body and returns the blood to the sinus venosus. Many species of bony fishes have a gas-filled bladder called a swim bladder. In modern bony fishes that possess a swim bladder, the organ serves principally in maintaining neutral buoyancy. In some fishes, the swim bladder has adapted to function as a sound amplifier. In terms of osmoregulation, both marine and freshwater fishes regulate the movement of water across their body surfaces. The tissue of marine fishes are less salty than the surrounding water, so water continually leaves the body of a marine fish through its skin and gills. To keep from becoming dehydrated, a marine fish drinks large amount of water and produces a small amount of concentrated urine. Many species of small bony fishes swim together in a coordinated fashion. This behavior is called schooling. Schooling is an adaptation for avoiding predators. An individual fish has a lesser chance of being eaten by a predator when in school than when alone. A school of small fish may give the impression of a large animal, thus discouraging predators. Schooling possesses a hydrodynamic advantage and increasing reproductive success. It also may facilitate locating food resources. There are different types of purpose for this behavior. Pony aggregations develop for the purpose of reproduction. These schools consist mainly of reproductively mature individuals. Migrating schools form along migration routes of bony fishes. Migrating schools often form into other types of schools, such as spawning schools. Feeding schools develop in the feeding grounds. Feeding schools form primarily due to the concentration of food organisms. Wintering schools originate in the wintering grounds of bony fishes. Various species of bony fishes may congregate into areas with the appropriate environmental conditions for survival. In terms of migration, some bony fish species are diadomous. They migrate between fresh and marine environments. Some are catadomous. They live in freshwater environments but migrate downriver to the ocean to spawn. Anadromous fishes live most of their lives in the ocean, but migrate into freshwater environments to spawn. The most common example of these fishes are the salmons. The reproductive behavior of bony fish is cyclical, meaning it happens on a timed and recurring basis. Most bony fish reproduce at least once a year and the process is called spawning. When open water fishes and those living around coral reefs and intra environment spawn directly into the water of their courtship. For some species, individual males may establish territories or aggregate into group prior to mating. Eggs fertilize in the water column, drift in the currents, and, and develop as part of the plankton called broadcast spawner. During spawning, a female fish releases eggs into the water then a male fish swims over then releases the sperm. Spawning may be triggered by changes in the amount of sunlight received daily, temperatures, tides, and many other environmental factors. The trigger to spawn varies with each specific species. Osteichthyes is divided into two subclasses, the Actinotherygii or the ray fin fish and the Sarcotherygii or the lobe fin fishes. Sarcoterygians are characterized by their fleshy pectoral and pelvic fins that articulate with the pectoral and pelvic girdles via a single bone. The lung fishes or dipnoi are also a small relic of a once diverse assemblage with only six extant species in three genera. A lung fish's jaw is fused to a brain case. Their caudal, dorsal, and anal fin are connected 
Their pectoral fins are long and tubular and their breathing organ, a part of the respiratory system, is attached to their esophagus. There are also the silicons, now represented by the two species in the single genus, the calumnae and the menadonis. So the silicons, they have a cosmoid scale, two dorsal fins and fleshy paired fins with skeletal elements. Though they are thought to be extinct, meron na recently found na mga buhay pa underwater, sometimes grouped with lungfish in subclass Sarcoterygii. The raven fish or the actinoterygians have several physical characteristics worth mentioning. The following is a general description of the characters of the class actinoterygii or raven fish. There is no one type of fish scale that all actinoterygians share. Ancestral actinoterygians generally had heavy and complex scales known as gamide scales. Today, surviving raven fishes generally have more flexible scales with reduced weight known as leptoid scales. It is believed that the lighter scales, while providing less protection, allowed the fish to avoid predators and find food easier, thus in increasing fitness. So the raven fishes can be divided up to three basic groups, the Colossiae, Colosteen, and Condosiae. So the superorder Colosteae, among new fishes, is a highly developed and possess various different crusts or groups. Body is covered by dermal scales, generally gamoid, cycloid, and tenon scales are found in these fishes. In some group scales are absent. Epidermis possess numerous mucous glands, caudal fin is hemocircle type, pelvic fins are situated towards anterior end of the body, mouth aperture is generally terminal, endoskeleton is completely bony in nature, swim bladder is present in most of the fishes, and the intestine do not have any spiral valve. In the holistea, Dorfo dorsal fin and pelvic fins are present very near of the caudal fin. Caudal fin is heterocircle type but seems to be homocircle. Spherical are absent and these are freshwater in habit. So last is the condostiae. The condostiae have scales that are either present or modified in forms. Caudal fin is heterocircle in type. Pelvic fins are posteriorly placed. Spiracular opening are present and the skeleton is composed of cartilage. In between vertebrae, there are notochords. There are approximately 34,000 known species of fish throughout the world which live in either fresh or saltwater environments. They are cold-blooded animals, but there are exceptions. There are two main groups of fish, namely the Convictees and the Ostictees based on the composition of the endoskeleton. The endoskeleton of the Condictees is made up of cartilage and they mainly live in marine habitats while the endoskeleton of Ostictees is composed of bones which are found in both marine and freshwater habitats. So the scales of the Condictees is made up or covered by very small denticles known as placoid scales. While on the Ostictees, if scales are present, there are various types of scales that cover them, which are the ganoids, laptoids, laptoid scales, which or the cycloid or the tenoids. The gills of the condictees are not covered by an upper column, while the ostictees are covered. The gills of the ostictees are covered by an upper column. The condictees do not have a swim bladder, while the ostictees have a swim bladder for buoyancy. It is also known as an air bladder or a gas bladder. In terms of fertilization, condictees in many cases have an internal fertilization while the ostictees can have external or internal fertilization. The condictees' tail lobes are unequal in size while the ostictees' tail lobes are equal in size. So that's the difference between the two types of fish and with this, and the discussion about a city. Good day to everyone and thank you.